Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be kind of an open book or a wide open uh, competition this spring. The top four contributors at linebacker are all gone when you talk about uh, Tough Borland in the middle and then uh, Pete Werner and um, uh, who am I missing? Baron Browning. Browning and then Justin Hilliard outside. Those four guys are were all seniors and they're gone. So you're kind of turning to the to the next group, uh, which was a year behind those guys, essentially. Uh, Taraja Mitchell, uh, Kevon Pope, Dallas Gant in particular, he's gotten to play a little bit. Uh, those three guys are probably next in line, although Craig Young also got to play quite a bit at outside linebacker last season. Uh, it's up in the air whether or not those guys will take full advantage of the free year that they had in 2020, because if they do – they would each have two years of eligibility left. And if you figure they're the presumptive starters, which I don't think anybody can presume that because I think they're going to go through spring football and there's a, a whole host of younger guys and talented guys coming through the pipeline. Now um, they're trying to rebuild the depth there a little bit. I mean, when you lose four seniors out of your position group, that is a, a huge vacuum to, to kind of refill. So in the 2021-2022 classes, they're trying to add some guys there. And uh, we'll see if, uh, you know, they get the numbers back up where they need to be to where the competition for playing time is what it needs to be. And they push each other and everything else. But I don't think anybody's going to play by default or just because, well, you've been waiting at your turn. It doesn't work like that at a place like Ohio State. You have to produce or you can't play. So my feeling is – uh, Gant is probably the guy I would have the most um, uh, good feeling about just because he's probably played the most of those guys that are kind of on the rise up uh, from juniors last year to juniors again this year. But um, again, there's a lot of young guys in the pipeline who are uh, going to be pushing for playing time. And again, Al Washington, uh, back as the linebackers coach, he flirted with going to Tennessee to become the defensive coordinator, decided to stay. And I think that continuity will bode well for Ohio State uh, as they try and refill that linebacker group, Restock, restocking the numbers and finding a workable two deep, uh, one, two guys at each of the three spots that are going to put them back where they need to be or, or keep them where they need to be at the top of the Big Ten. Yeah, I think there's a number of things to to look at here. Uh, I was just looking at the snap counts, and Taraj Mitchell played a little bit more than Dallas Gantt last year, but Gantt playing middle linebacker when uh, they could have gone to him when Tuff Borland was out with COVID. They went to Justin Hilliard instead uh, and and moved Baron Browning to to the middle. So, um you know, Mitchell has been the backup for two years. Gann has been the backup for two years. Pope has a backup for a couple of years as well. And you assume they're going to just rise up. But then you've got other guys waiting in the wings. I know Craig Young played more than Pope did last year for like the first half. And then Pope played more than Young did the second half, playing the same Sam position. Uh, and so is I think you assume like those three guys will maybe start out the spring at top of the depth chart, but then can they hold off the guys below them? And then I also wonder, is this going to be a standard four, three defense or do they move more towards a hybrid linebacker as, as the base? Is it more of a four, two, five where you've got a, you know, even, even Craig young might be more of a hybrid than just your standard Sam linebacker being a guy who is big, but athletic or, you know, it won't be court Williams. We know that because he's still out. But will they eventually move towards a four-two-five? That's what I'm I'm wondering. But with the number of linebackers they've got, I don't think that you can say that these are your starters. But I think they the Mitchell at the will get at the mic, and then I assume Pope at the Sam will be the the, the first three guys you see, and then where it goes from there after you know the first practice, who knows? Court Williams once healthy kind of becomes the wild card in this whole equation. Just you know, I know that there's a lot of excitement around him, but uh, things got cut off pretty quick with his injury. Uh, you know, a lot of names that are like young right now that we haven't talked about a lot. Tommy Eichenberg saw a couple of snaps uh, in late game action, and of course you have Cody Simon and Mitchell Melton. Uh, you know, what What do they mean there? But, yeah, that class of Gantt, Mitchell, and Pope seem to be 
the presumptive favorites to at least start the process at the top. But nothing, as Steve said, nothing is given. Uh, everything's earned. So, you know, being the day one starter in terms of practice doesn't mean anything with uh, a lot of time to go. Uh, certainly with the time that Craig Young has spent on the field in terms of uh, last season, he seems to be somebody who could be a little bit of a disruptor there of getting in. Uh, but, you know, I'm really excited to see, uh, in particular, Court Williams once he is healthy and able to contribute uh, because he was one of those recruits that came in with a lot of fanfare, even if he was not talked about as much as some of the other guys in the class. And Ryan Day said he, he looked like a future captain when we talked to him signing day a year ago. And when your coach is already saying that about you when you've been on campus for, um, I don't even know if he was on campus at, at that point. That may have been the December signing day where he said that about Court Williams. So that that always makes you uh, just keep that name in the back of your mind. I do wonder, is there a fourth quarter or fourth linebacker that can be what Justin Hilliard was? Is it is it Craig Young where you just – there's somebody you can rely on. Is it Kayvon Pope who I think can play inside or outside or, you know, uh, you know, even like a guy like Reed Carrico, who I don't think it would be, but he's a guy that can play anywhere. I think in, in this defense and, you know, just finding a fourth guy that if somebody goes down, then there's, there's talent around that you can move people around. And we know the will and the mic are pretty interchangeable in this defense. And that gives you more versatility. Dallas can't start in his career as an outside linebacker at Ohio state, I believe before moving inside, and he was another guy that they loved right away with his intelligence and understanding of the defense. I, I think those three guys were really, really hyped um, before they got to Ohio State and then after they, they arrived. And now it's time to see it. And we'll, we'll, we'll get the first words on it this spring. But it's I, I guess it's now or never for those guys, considering they are seniors or could be Richard Juniors, however you want to put it. But uh, yeah, and as Steve said, it's not just going to be by default. There's, there's enough talent to – push them i think and it's important to have that fourth guy but let's not see it in terms of a four four as uh, no, no. a lot of people were not very enthusiastic about seeing the four four out there at times where uh maybe running a nickel would have uh, made more sense 